Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Hadfield. First and foremost, I wanted to thank Excellence Canada for giving me this award, a, a special uh, Board of Governors recognition of achievement in excellence. But as everyone there today knows, um, recognition of achievement and awards, even though they're given to an individual, of course, um, represents something much larger, and every individual represents a much larger team. It, it, that couldn't be more true in my case. As an astronaut for the Canadian Space Agency, uh, I represent the, the incredible amount of work of so many hundreds of people directly involved uh, within the Canadian Space Agency itself, so many thousands of people in the industry across Canada and around the world, and the teams that are working day and night to support uh, the space exploration that's going on above our heads. The uh, sub-theme of the gathering today is forging the future. I think it's a really interesting analogy. Forging is a process where you take um, some pretty unlikely raw materials, so, some maybe uh, non-lustrous and uh, unrecognized raw materials, and somehow recognize the fact that if they are prepared properly and tempered properly and then put together in just the right way, they can be turned into something that far exceeds their, their uh, fundamental basic capability. That, that example is to me the very essence of excellence and it is enacted over and over again in a lot of different businesses but specifically in my own of trying to find a way to safely explore the rest of the universe and to understand everything that's around us. I was commander of the International Space Station, the most complicated international project ever undertaken uh, to build one thing together. Uh, a million pound, uh, five hockey rink sized human creation going Mach 25, going, going eight kilometers a second around the world 16 times a day and being asked to command that ship. And a ship is a human construct, but the ship, of course, represents uh, not only a huge amount of financial investment, but also the lives of the people on board. And when we talk about uh, tempering and forging the future, uh, to me, that process is critical. It, it begins, of course, with visualization. What is the definition of success? How are we trying to put this team together um, in order to accomplish a specific thing? How do you communicate that measure of success and share it with the people that are involved at every different level? And then how do you prepare them? How do you give people the skills? Uh, how do you recognize the fact that, uh, that each individual talent or skill or learned capability that people have is the very uh, beginning essence of excellence uh, in the overall project. And practicing and simulating and preparing and, and uh, taking that group of people who otherwise might have never been able to forge into anything, now can work together in unison, pulling in the same harness so that they can start to do things that are right on the edge of impossible to, to gather fuel and metal and nuts and bolts and bits of plastic and carbon fiber and somehow turn that into a rocket ship that leaves the Earth and safely carries, carries its crew above the atmosphere. Uh, to me, the, uh, that preparation phase, of course, is, is so vital, and the, and the leadership that's needed in it, and the recognition of excellence throughout, in order to someday be able to trust yourself to light the spark and, and set the craft uh, on its way. And then that leads, of course, to the execution, the, the critical phase where time is short but consequences are high, where the fruit of all of that preparation is, is going to, uh, to come ripe on the vine. And, and how do you real-time manage that? If you wait until that time without all of the, the detailed simulation, getting the skills up in the team and then practicing those skills together, then you're counting so much on luck. And the only way we can ever succeed in launching a rocket ship or performing the hundreds of experiments up on the International Space Station are through all of those years of accurate, clinical, careful simulation so that we can make the right decisions while we're executing the plan. And then finally, whether it's in, uh, in personally preparing for an exam or being an Olympic athlete, 
or being an astronaut, once you have done all the initial stages and then executed, what then do you do with the result? How do you entrench the lessons learned into yourself, but more importantly, into the organization that's going to support that type of activity in the future? And in, at NASA, we have flight rules that are, a lot of them, written in blood. How we learn to do the things that we do so that we can safely execute it next time, so that we can confidently launch another group of human beings off the planet. And those three factors for me are, are personal and professional keys to excellence. An intense, um, unrelenting, and non-ego-based um, absolute desire to prepare and get things ready. And then a real sense of purpose during the execution of what's actually happening and not allowing yourselves to be distracted by the noise that doesn't matter, but focusing on reaching that goal that everybody has bought into. And then finally, keeping those lessons close to heart at the end and learning from them so that it builds a deeper and wider and broader foundation to be able to be uh, even more capable of the future. Uh, it, it's amazing where that combination of skills and techniques and capabilities can lead us. It's, it's almost inconceivable to me the, uh, the things I've seen and the places I've been as a result of that. And uh, I'm very grateful uh, to the folks at Excellence Canada for this award. And uh, I wish you great success in the rest of the conference. Thanks for including me.